is Estonia? A location built on speed, violent jumps everywhere, tight corners after each fast sector, and bail she games. This time in Estonia the setup is focused on speed, so you should add just a little bit of toe out to the front wheels to help with those fast turns. While on the rear wheels, you can set more toe in to help with the car stability overall and to get out of those square turns and bail chicanes as fast as possible. You don't want crazy toe values here, because if the wheels are pointed too much in or out, they will induce too much drag when wanting to go straight and fast. As well as for the camber, Medium values like these will suffice, because they offer enough grip when blasting through those twisty sectors, so you can be in full control of the car at any moment. For the differentials, the job is simple. Get as much driving lock as possible, so you ensure that most of the car's power is not wasted when accelerating, but also keep in mind that too much lock will induce understeer. I say that these values ensure the best outcome. For the braking lock, on the front axle, I've gone with a smaller value, so that when braking hard, at least one wheel is allowed to rotate more freely and the car can still take the turn. While on the rear, a bigger value will make both wheels lock under heavy braking, making the rear end slide a little. We can use this to our advantage to easily take those square turns after one fast sector, because the car will end up sliding sideways, this way positioning itself for the fastest corner drive out. And for the preload, lower values to the front and a bit higher to the rear wheels. Why higher in the rear you may wonder, because with such a high driving lock, oversteer can be a problem when accelerating too hard while exiting a corner, so a higher preload value will help correct that. In the damping tab, you can leave the slow bump at zero. The road surface in Estonia is smooth, with a few big jumps and crests here and there. For the fast bump on the other hand, things are a little bit different. Some tracks in this location have a lot of big jumps, so a stiff setting is necessary. You can go as high as plus 4, combined with a high bump division. For the tracks with small jumps or no jumps at all, you can set a fast bump at plus 1 and a medium low value for the bump division. This way, some of the other big bumps and crests can be absorbed by the fast bump from time to time. Finally, here is the rebound. For this location, a minus 2 value will be just right. On these tracks, there are a lot of fast bumpy sectors that lift the car, so if you want to be in full control, a softer value like this one will ensure full contact between the road and the wheels at a minimal cost regarding the car's stability. On to the brakes, if you've been a subscriber of my channel for some time, you may see and feel a difference regarding the braking force and the brake bias. This is because I've made some changes to my setup, and to be more exact I've installed a brake mod which has changed everything in the way I use the brakes now. There will be a video review coming soon, so stay tuned. You can see now that I've gone with a high brake pressure and the brake bias is set pretty much to the front wheels. This allows for heavy braking right before the turn, Tons of stability and maneuverability, which will ensure that little to no time is lost during this phase. For the handbrake force, a medium high value will be enough to easily rotate the rear end of your car before U turns or other tight turns. The gearbox for these tracks has to be set for high speeds, but also acceleration when getting out of those square turns and bail chicanes. So, with these values, I've made sure that both of these criteria are met. Now, in the springs tab, I've tried setting the ride height as low as possible. I felt that going lower than 40mm will make the car hit the bump stop too many times, making it hard to drive on those bumpy sectors, not to mention jumping. The spring rate is set just 1 pip softer than the default value, because as I mentioned earlier, the road surface is smooth, so there is no need for crazy soft space. The ARBs or the anti-roll bars are set on a medium value to the front and a medium high in the back. I didn't want to go stiffer than this, because these tracks allow for a lot of cutting. So you don't want the wheel that goes up or down on the grass to influence the other one which is still on the road, because it can destabilize the entire ride. Leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. You can also become a member by clicking the join button or make a small donation via the thanks button to support me even further. Come for a chat on the discord server or ask for driving tips, share moments and more. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track. Bye bye!